And uh, I'm going to dispense of the chair's report, and we're going to dig into public comment, and we're going to ask the presenters to come forward on public comment. And first we'll have Mr. Sam Bellamino, followed by Mr. Alex Zimmerman. <laughs> if you'd like to speak, sir, you're very welcome. I... Sam Bellamino is more fast. Yeah, Sam Bellamino on there? And for how many minutes we supposed to be speaking? Two minutes. Can we get three minutes? And the clock is running. Start the clock. Let's uh, talk about it. We can talk during your time if you want. Five, and I'm going to ask that you remember, a lot of these, a lot of these recipients, well, talking, uh, a lot of these recipients. Can you not? Wait, don't interrupt, sir. Hey, my time's going. Pause it. Pause my time if you're going to talk. Pause this time. Pause this time. Pause this time. Start it over, as a matter of fact. Please remember that a lot of these recipients have never come to City Hall before, and uh, they're not used to the kind of discourse you're about to see, and this is not generally speaking. Oh, you're speaking. teaching them. Good and job. And so you'll see what happens. You'll see what happens when we have an open mic, but I just ask you to be a little, little, I'll ask you to be a little courteous, if you will. Now, let's start the time. Mr. Bellamino, you're on, sir. Well, so you all know, I'm a bad citizen. You want to watch out for me? I'm a bad citizen. Civil discourse, he calls it. I disagree with what my government's doing. I'm a bad citizen. Make sure you listen to him. Do not follow my example and speak against what they're doing. Follow them. They're doing everything right. Nothing is wrong in America. Everything is okay. Okay, everyone? Do not follow me. Do not speak against what they're doing, because they're doing everything right. We have uh, four out of five people expected to be in poverty throughout their lifetime, 80% of Americans. You know you guys make $120,000 a year? Only 5% of Americans make more than that. Your housing authority has no room. They have a wait list. And to get on that wait list, they have to play a lottery to get on there. King County Housing Authority in 2011 opened the wait list to put 3,000 people on a wait list. Not give them a place, but a wait list. 23,000 people applied. That means 20,000 people didn't have a home. Yes, you're doing everything correct. We're good. 10,000 people homeless every single night, and you've done nothing. You know, it's like a grain of sand. If you just did one small thing, it would relieve a lot of pressure. So much pressure that we'd be able to move and do and go in a different direction. However, you have no ability to move in a new direction. You've screwed this city. You've screwed this country because you're arrogant, because there's a system in place that you just... You've corrupted the fundamental basics. You're telling these people that I'm discourse? You're, you're redefining what it means to be a slave. We're not slaves. There is no discourse. I disagree with my government. I should have the right, the First Amendment, and I also have a duty as a citizen to go against any corruption that I see. So by your arrogance and your pompous comment about what they're about to see was disrespectful and not needed. We need you to grow a pair and do something for the citizens. Quit the white, white noise. We, there's too much white noise. We need a squeaky wheel, something that grabs everyone's attention and says, hey, we're doing something better. We're doing something different, not, hey, we're appointing a new person. We're doing a great job. So everyone, everything is okay. Don't worry about poverty level. Don't worry about everyone's median income decreasing after the last 10 years. Don't worry about their salaries being more than 95% of Americans because everything is a-okay. Thanks for fucking us. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask that you, we have young folks in the room, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bellamio. Please show some restraint on language. Mr. Zimmerman, you are up. Yeah, for three minutes. Two minutes, sir. Three minutes, okay. Um, guys, what does he talk is only part of story. I will explain to you another part of story. I brainwashed what has happened in America for the last 30 years. United States and America right now more dangerous than exactly Seattle City and King Country, more dangerous than Soviet, uh, Soviet Empire and German Nazi. You need to understand these people use principle what is used before KGB and Gestapo. It is exactly what has happened right now in Seattle. King Country can Council, King Country Council across the street operate with eight billion dollars. <coughs> Every year budget eight billion dollars. For four years we never can talk about money. Nobody can come to council chamber in King Country across the street for 40 years in talking about money. We have right is us money. It's a business money. It's a people money. It's taxpayer money. For 40 years they stood in these nine crooks. What is it here? You know what this means? Support this. Why? Because belong to same mafia, to same organized criminal. In what has happened now, it's not touchable. It look like Chicago right now in Tory. You know what this mean? Al Capone, never touchable, and this crook, nine crook here, and nine crook in King Country Council Chamber, never touchable. We have to play nice. Exactly, because these people only care about his assets and corporation. It's exactly, it's not about $125,000 salary. 
what is people money, taxpayer money, what is quadruple for last 30 years. Interesting. In 50% of American, totally poor, but this about not touchable. It's a crook, it's a mafia. So we speak right now to everybody. You are new generation. You will come to America, who right now much more poorer than Russia, Africa, or South America. You need to understand this. Go to the internet, look <coughs> statistics, look what is happening in America, because this crook, this mafia, control country for the last 30 years, includes this ninth crook, what is here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Next, we'll have Marco Sari, followed by Ashley Morreld, please. She wants Let's go ahead. She was a great. I guess. And we're joined by Councilmember Nick Licata. Thanks, Councilmember Licata. Ms. Richards, please, followed by Carol Solomon. Yeah, I didn't want to step on this beautiful art over here. It's really wonderful to see it um, displayed in here, whoever was the creator. And then um, I'm here to uh, let you know that I'm still uh, baffled by um, what's going on in this city. I always come with a lot of things on my mind. And uh, I only have two minutes, and I go to Burien. I have three minutes. I feel so comfortable. I don't feel like they're going to put bullets through me. They're very understanding. The mayor even sits there at all their council meetings. Here, here. Um, but this display of things is just uh, despicable. And I bring the cross because I don't know if you're familiar with the cross and the vampire. And I believe that vampires sit here on the throne every time I come here. Even with riding the mayor back in 2010 and not even receiving a response. I said, how gorn, how appalling. So I feel very strongly about people that say that they're for the people, but all you get is a bunch of pathological liars, lying, lying all the way to the grave. And I'm not for it. So whenever you see me, I'm going to speak boldly as I ought to speak. And fear is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> so I'm just here to tell you again, I don't understand what you're doing. I probably won't because I haven't seen any change. I've seen Mr. Zimmerman come here. I've seen Mr. Bellamino come here. I've seen Honorable Michael B. Fuller come here. I've heard words from Alicia Cross about what you're doing down here. And everything is true to the letter. So yeah, okay, time's up. It should be for others, too. Thank you very much, Ms. Richard. Uh, Carol Solomon, please. Yes, I'm speaking today on behalf of the Emoji Peace Center and uh, also the Horace Mann Building. So I know there has been a pushback against giving the African American and Africans from the diaspora a building. El Centro has a building, the International District has a building for all the Asian, Asian people, and we are just asking as a community to have the school district revisit that. We're beginning push back from the school district. They're saying they need to reclaim all of their buildings. They are not even willing to share the building. And there are other sites that could be used to move NOVA to. And I'm asking that you seriously reconsider this and seriously take the black community and the African community from the diaspora and all those included East and West Africans more seriously because our population, our numbers are growing, yet no one is giving us assistance to help our children, to save our children. The juvenile detention is growing and expanding, so uh, city of Seattle can lock up more of our young people. We have the solutions. We have told you numerous times, we have the solutions to save our children, but it falls on deaf ears, okay? So if you come to the table next time, 
You need to be honest. Come with honesty and integrity because that's what I expect of elected officials, not a bunch of... Can I ask you a question? Uh, you're testifying in front of the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Technology Committee on the building for uh, the for that's owned by the school district. Yes. Is there is, there's several other committees on the council and there's committees on the school board. Is there a reason why you're? I'm bringing to it. This? I'm bringing it to you. I don't want to pass no, the buck. Question, the city council. Yeah, my question okay. Is, the the buck the buck has to stop this, somewhere. This, this, this okay. Is, this is not a fight. This is a question. Are, are, do you know of any other committees that you may want to give your testimony to as well? Are there any other committees that you may want us to share with you? Yes. Okay, so we'll have to talk offline about that because I'm not sure the answer. So I'll, we'll, see, we'll see which one that would be. And it's also a civil rights issue. Okay, well, we don't have to stretch it. I mean, I, I'm trying to help you, so I need to okay, try to I figure out where, where I your testimony that. might be better, better served. Okay, you still have remaining time. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, the civil rights piece, like I said, everyone in the city has a community center. Not everyone, we don't have one. The Latino commu uh, community has one, the Asian community has one. All we are asking for what is rightfully ours and we will solve a lot of these problems of uh, juvenile detention, overcrowding with all, mostly all of our children. Okay, so all of these, um, expulsions and expansions, it's all tied into the discipline piece. And we have the answers. All we are asking is for you to come to the table, we will give you the solutions, and if you can't figure it out, we will help you figure it out. Exactly. Thank you, Ms. Solomon. Uh, Ms. Paula Revere will be our last speaker. Hi. Is it, is it possible to get three minutes, please? Uh, why don't you go ahead and start, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, but it's no, tough. We, we, okay, I'll try. Okay, um, first I just wanted to give a little background. I know you probably all feel beat up, but I can actually defend you. Yeah, I do you. feel beat up, as a matter of fact. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, but I can actually defend you and also defend what they're saying, because what's happening to all of us is uh, deceit and um, manipulation by others and exploiting your good hearts and energies. So in a very quick little summary, I'd like to say that our nation was based on freedom and liberty, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness for all, and not liberty, equality, fraternity for some to control the rest. And in the beginning of history, there was always the might makes right and the few over the many versus the lovers of knowledge and freedom and wisdom for all and justice for all. And our nation <clears throat> is based on codified civil law actually coming from the most ancient nation, which is Ireland. And the only law that opposes it is Roman canon law. <clears throat> which was created by the Jesuits in 1540 to reverse the Protestant Reformation. And as a result, it is corporate law, and it exists as a Trojan horse in which to conquer our country from within. So <clears throat> everybody thinks the only way you can survive is for profit, for business. But if you go ahead and you take the letter of the package that the founders created from the heart, you'll see that we can actually do just fine with the education, et cetera, and putting a tariff on them and let our government run from the tariff on them which is how our government ran until they infiltrated us. So that's the prehistory.